What is up, guys? Welcome to the show called Joey Answers Your Questions, The Show. It's been a while, but um, it's been a long story. Basically, I was on a film shoot in the States, and now I am quarantining mandatory, mandatory quarantine for 14 days in my house. And it's a new house, as you can probably see. This is not the usual setup. But before we hop into your questions, we're going to take a look at some of the memes you posted on the subreddit today our slash better ideas it says joey playing his trap card joey putting a consumer trap at the end of his video yikes you want to know the story about this uh this consumer trap is i literally didn't even clue in to the fact that it was probably a bad ad to put right after i had consumer trap there was no self-awareness at all you know i'm just gonna stick an audible ad because it's an audible video and it's what we agreed but i didn't I, for some reason i just didn't clue in how ironic that was and that was just a big mistake on my part i signed up for pasta memes not this when you watch better ideas and realize all the ways you're ruining your life well what do you know that is useful oh all right it's pretty funny, it's not the funniest, you know, just gotta be brutally honest, but I do appreciate the use of these uh, little, you know, Joey cutout heads here, that's great. When you're also a 20 something white male who is average height and bald with light facial hair. Maybe I am productive? <laughs> I like that. He likes it. What is the better gear the better ideas uses? kit.co slash filmmaking. Ooh, I might have not updated this. Yeah, I still use these guys. I'm actually using this mic right now. It's like the orange version. Uh, Rode NTG2, I recently upgraded to a Sennheiser MKH8060. I don't use this USB mix thing anymore. I have a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. And I just, this video is being filmed on the brand new A7S III uh, with a 24 millimeter G Master lens. I'm gonna probably make an effort to up, update this kit, but the last videos, like every Better Ideas video you see, has been shot on pretty much this kit, except for the new mic. Feels bad, man when everyone remembers to smash that like button, but no one is willing to smash you. <laughs> Yikes, that's pretty funny. <laughs> that's good, that's good. You know, I had to do it to him. That look when your channel is for better ideas, but it rarely translates in <laughs> into better content. Wow. This is, you guys are just roasting me. This is the, the part of the show where you guys roast me for 10 minutes straight. I know where this is going. Do you? No. Okay. Okay, anyone else feel the same way? Also a video suggestion for Joey. My knowledge about productivity and self-improvement. My knowledge of how to apply it. You know, that's what hopefully this channel is trying to let you guys do. It, easy enough concepts that you can apply to your life, um, but if you want me to do an even better job of it than I already am, I don't know how that's possible. I'm just kidding, yeah, just let me know. Yo, everyone, let's start using this subreddit for memes and useful info, articles, discussions, everything. 476 members, zero online. Yeah, that's gonna be the inside joke of this subreddit is that it's just a ghost town. When your channel is called Better Ideas, but you don't have any videos, Video ideas. Yeah, that's me every day. Joey's seeing regular memes. Joey's seeing a meme about an abusive family. <laughs> that's the meme review today. Pretty good memes in there, but I know you guys can do better, so just like hit hit the memes up. Hit put the memes in the subreddit. Alright, now to the serious part. It's gonna be weird transitioning from uh, this type of funny meme -y content to more serious, uh, more serious business. Also, I dressed up for this video. I don't know if you can tell. I'm in quarantine, but it doesn't mean I can't be fancy. Fancy level, here we come. Julian Girth says, Hey Joey, I think you are currently not in a relationship. Uh, where is this going? Physical touch and words of affirmation. I think you are currently not in a relationship and I don't know what your experience with that stuff is either. But I was still wondering what you think of the most important things in a relationship are. Like what method you would use to determine whether to get slash stay together with a partner or whether or not the relationship is worth marrying slash keeping in your life. Just curious what your thoughts are. Awesome channels, greetings from Germany. Well, thanks for the question, Julian. So I would say in any relationship being like speaking the truth is by far the number one most important factor in relationship success. And that's not a real statistic, that's just the way I see things. If you speak the truth 
without trying to hide things from your partner, even in the face of an uncomfortable situation, if there might be some immediate backlash towards you telling the truth or being honest, it's always worth it in the end to be brutally honest. If people are incompatible, you'll be rejected no matter what. And being brutally honest is the best tool that you have at your disposal for filtering out people who are incompatible with you. Because if you speak your mind and they're like, wow, that's messed up, I don't agree with that at all, you guys can go your separate ways. Can you be honest and open with each other? Um, and can you maintain that honesty and be honest about how honest you wanna be going forward? Thank you for your question, Julian. Moving on to the second question, we got A.H says, what's your favorite thing you've ever learned? Skill-wise, not knowledge. Also, ever tried horseback riding? Well, I'll start with the second question first. I've tried horseback riding one time when I was a very little child. It was like a big Clydesdale horse and it was intimidating to me. I didn't really ride it. Someone just kind of put me on it and I survived. Barely. But that's about my entire experience with horseback riding. But what's my favorite thing you've ever learned skill-wise? Let's see. This question's hurting me. Favorite. You know, making movies, video editing. It's all just sort of stuff I do every day, but it's not like that interesting of an answer. Ah. Joel, what's my favorite thing I've ever learned? Well, I'd say probably for you, like how to use a camera. That's changed your life. Yeah. Maybe I just will go with that answer. Thank you, Joel. Yeah, I'd, I'm just going to have to be do the safe answer. It's just such an obvious answer. I don't need the creative cloud updates. Thank you very much. No, 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 no. I don't want to update any of this shit. Uh, how to use a camera and filmmaking in general is something that I would say has had the most impact on me. Uh, it's the obvious answer, but it's the true answer. Sven V says, what do you honestly think of the excessive amount of courses being sold online? There are a lot of courses, aren't there? Uh, some of them are very useful. I've taken a lot of very useful courses online, but I've also taken some really useless, it should have been like free content. One thing that I have noticed though, is that courses in like the $50 range typically aren't as useful as the courses in like the 300 to $1,000 range. Like I feel like people, like the premium courses are actually where you would learn the most. Um, obviously you still have to do your due diligence and really dive into it, but I feel like the best like most advanced substantial content is usually in a higher price bracket and then stuff in the lower bracket is stuff that probably should have been free anyways but people often create like huge sales funnels towards these little $50 products that should have been free in the first place you see this with like fitness youtubers all the time i'm pretty mixed on it i will probably i will probably be one of the people who develops a course but I'm, it's not gonna be a willy-nilly course. It's gonna be something substantial. Mohammed Hasnain, I'm sorry for absolutely slaughtering your name, says, what is your life goal? Why all the self-improvement? Yeah, see, this is something I talk about all my, this is something I talk about on my channel all the time. You need a life goal, not just self-improvement all the time. So for me, my life goal, aside from like the, the higher moral goals and ideals I want to strive towards, um, one of them is to just get super good at my filmmaking craft so I can eventually make short films or feature films that affect people in a deep way. I want to hone my craft so that I can move people with cinema. Basically, I feel like general self-improvement is very important, but it's it should only be there to facilitate your higher purposes. Self-improvement without that higher purpose isn't really progress. Progress without a discernible end goal is just movement. Tech V102, Sumhead Aher. Sorry, just it's a confusing name anyway. So in these times when there's so much of negativity online every day, I personally am very frustrated by the social media and the people. Question, what is your take on it and how do you remain positive amidst all this chaos? Uh, I feel like negative articles and people roasting people like you guys do on my subreddit, it, it always gets more clicks and more reactions and people are way more likely to click on an article being like, Elon Musk in shambles because he messed up on stage or something rather than Elon Musk had a great outing at the 
2020 tech con, whatever. I hate this channel. No, no! Like, that's just boring. People want to watch the world burn. You know, there's a reason why gladiator fights back in the day were so popular. One way to counteract that and spread more positivity into the world is to just spend way less time on social media. Like, stop looking at screens so much and go read a book or something. Inevitably, as people are begging for screen real estate, for your attention, they're just gonna get, it's the whole world's just gonna get more and more negative online. So just unplug yourself a little bit. Shocky says, what time do you wake up in the morn, Joey? Ideally eight, but I've not hit eight uh, anywhere close the past couple of weeks because my whole schedule has been completely messed up. I think I woke up at like 1030 today, like not really good. Uh, I need to get better at it personally. Once I get in the routine of things again, I really want to make sure I'm waking up at around 730 AM, but just totally candidly, I haven't been. Ryan Rowell says, what have you been doing during quarantine? So that's a little bit relevant for me today since I'm on a mandatory 14 day quarantine. If I leave my house, according to the Canadian government, I could be charged up to $1 million or spend up to three years in prison. So I literally can't leave this box for another 12 days, I think. No, probably 11 days, it's day three now. Thankfully, I live in BC, Canada. So when I'm not in mandatory lockdown, the province has kind of opened up a bit. I've been going to the gym. I've been kind of going about my life, you know, obviously not hitting the the pubs or anything with my friends. Um, but that's the only real difference is a little bit less social outings at nighttime on the weekends. But it's been pretty normal here. Rindert Persoon says, what's your max squat, deadlift and bench? <laughs> Jasha says, got to get the stats. Oh, man, dude. Uh, not that great. I'm not very good at the fundamentals. I'm just gonna be straight up with you. If I'm making excuses, I have a really weird shoulder. It's like I've had low back pain and a weird sh like right shoulder for as long as I can remember. Oh, actually, sorry. Not, the shoulder thing is new, but the low back pain is not new. So I find that squats really hurt my back. I've been told front squats help that, but I've been too lazy to switch to my front squats. Without the BS, I've probably, my bench max, if, if we're talking like one rep max, I've been able to do like, probably like 240 or something. Uh, I'm, I'm almost at 225 on incline, um, and it feels really comfortable. Like it feels like it's hitting my chest and not my shoulder. I tried to get into deadlifting last year and I could do like two plates in a bit, which is nothing. I got to 285 on squat. Um, so again, nothing spectacular at all. It's just rookie numbers. Those are rookie numbers in this racket. I have some uh, joint afflictions that hinder me from doing that. I'm gonna like look for ones that aren't at the top that maybe have like a lot of uh, upvotes. Like why does my carpet smell like cat pee? Yeah, sorry about that. That wasn't your cat, it was me. You peed on my fucking rug. Aaron says, Halo or Minecraft? Uh, Halo every time. Minecraft's fun too. Why is your head naked? Complete freedom, my friend. Oh, little bald bro here. Definitely vouching for me. Yeah, it's way more aerodynamic and it honestly looks better on me. Do you practice or play any musical instruments? Yeah, I dabble with guitar. I'm quite good at piano. I'm just gonna boast like that, but I literally had a scholarship and went to school for piano before I switched majors. So I have a good competency in classical piano, but I want to get better at jazz. You like jazz? If I handed you $1,000, how would you spend it? I'd buy groceries. <laughs> Comfort Ajibola. It's pronounced Ajibola. I'm so sorry. Nice to see you in here again. What did you intend to do after finishing school? What are you currently doing? Do you use your knowledge from school in any way doing what you do currently? Yeah, so I do a mix between YouTube and freelance video. Like, as I just said, I was on a film shoot. I help out where I can with my friends who have uh, production companies and stuff. I did media and communications in school. I did a lot of filmmaking classes. So in a way it was helpful, but the vast majority of what I learned, I learned before I went to school and I learned being a freelance videographer while I was in school and after I was in school. You know, I feel like my filmmaking classes weren't that useful. Okay, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next video. Let me know if you want me to do like a house tour or something because I should probably clean up the place a little bit, get rid of some of the boxes from moving in. Uh, doing a house tour video would really help me whip the place into shape and give me incentive. Other than that, thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.
Damn, boy.